Freddy man uh, stole his swag now. Hey, Hold on. Lil' Jeff said he the king of white boy swagging, right? Stun on one time, let's just let it fuck up. Uh, yeah, Young Thug. The definition of came a long way. I mean, just look at this, bro. <sighs> yeah, I mean, after seeing all that, who would have thought he would turn into this? It's lit. Now, we all know who Young Thug is, right? At this point, sex, Jeffrey himself. But some of you may not know his come up, his rise to fame. Now, this isn't going to be a 30 for 30 hour long documentary of his life and everything about him growing up, but just mostly from a musical standpoint where he started to now. And then I'll talk about his impact on the rap game. And boy, has he had a lot. So without further ado, let's get it. So Young Thug began his musical career in 2010, debuting as a guest appearance on rapper True Royal's song, She Can Go, where he has a heavy Wayne influence on his voice, even the way he raps, especially the regardly, oops, I mean regardless line. After releasing his first mixtape series, I Came From Nothing, throughout 2011 and 2012, Young Thug caught the attention of fellow Atlanta rapper Gucci Mane, who actually went on to sign Young Thug to his label 1017 Brick Squad Records. He then went on to release his fourth mixtape under 1017 Records, 1017 Thug which ended up actually getting some real positive reviews from music critics, such as Pitchfork, where it was included in the honorable mentions for album of the year for 2013, and even on Complex's top 50 albums of the year at number 36, and so much more. In October of 2013, Thug released what I think at least was his first breakthrough single, Stoner. I'm stoner, I'm stoner, I'm stoner. Which had a lot of unofficial remixes actually, including Jim Jones, Wale, Jadakiss, I Am Sue, Trick Track, among others, but he actually disapproved of all these remixes. Here's a clip of him talking about it. Oh, yeah. People just freestyling, yeah. but so we know it's gonna be an official gonna version. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you how I feel about that. Okay. I think that it should be took down because if you feel like my song ain't tough enough to the point where you can't write, you feel like you gotta freestyle on it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really a battle rapper. I'm ready, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to go on, you know. Go get loose with it. I'd rather battle you if you think you can freestyle on my song. Wow. Because I'm, I'm way tougher than freestyling, so don't think you just cool or don't think I, I'm, I'm happy that you're doing it because of who you are. Right. I'm ready for war. Damn, bro. Metro Boomin want some more, nigga. In the next month, the music video for Metro Boomin's song, Some More, was released. It was actually the first time we would hear the Metro Boomin want some more tag that Metro would use all the time after that, which is pretty legendary if you ask me. It was also the first song he made with Alex Toume, who became his go-to engineer for pretty much everything from then until Slime Season 2. And to end the year off, we can't talk about Thugger's come up without mentioning one of my favorite rappers still to this day. Rich homie Kwan. Honestly, I knew right away, the moment I heard Thug's feature on that, that he was gonna blow, for sure. It was just too different, just too fire, bro. It's the kid Thug, we here live right now in Texas with it. We just turned up on the stage. Big shout out to Fader, man. Big shout out to Fader. On January 18th, 2014, Thug revealed that he had been offered an $8.5 million contract, bruh, to sign with Future's free band's record label. Sheesh! And in March of that year, Thug's affiliation with Cash Money Records and Birdman resulted in a lot of speculation in the media like, what? Is he signed to the label or no? Nah? But the label's publicist later said that that was major cap. And in March of that year, Ronald Caveman Rosario, director of Urban Music at 1017 Distribution, let everybody know that Thug is signed to a management deal with Birdman's Rich Gang, not a record deal, and is still signed to 1017 Brick Squad Records. Man, Quan about to drop a tape. It's called Young Quan and Rich Homie Thug. And I think it's gonna be a world breaker. So so that Young Quan tape never dropped, although Young Rich Homie Thuggin did drop about a year later unofficially when hundreds of leaks came out. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves just yet. Ah, uh, 2014. 
Bro, that was the year that Thugga really started to gain popularity in the mainstream. He was featured on the cover of Fader in early 2014, and on March 24th, he stated that his debut album will be titled Carter 6, referencing the highly acclaimed The Carter series from Lil Wayne, who has been the biggest influence in Thug's music career. He always talked about Wayne's influence coming up. Goddamn Wayne, Wayne, and Wayne. <laughs> I won't listen to nothing else. The fact that the nigga got like 100 M's and he still rap every day. It's amazing. Like two days later, it was revealed that Young Thug was working on a collaborative album with Metro Boomin, which was supposed to be titled Metro Thuggin, and was supposed to drop in spring of 2014. The song The Blanguage was supposed to be the lead single for it, which is definitely top 10 Thug, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 2020 and I'm still waiting on that Metro Thuggin tape. But anyways, in June of that year, it had been confirmed that Young Thug had officially signed to Kevin Lyles and Leo Cohen's label, 300 Entertainment. This is also pretty random, but in July of that year, you know the song Danny Glover? Yeah, Asylum Records and Atlantic Records officially changed the name from Danny Glover to Two Bitches. But it was originally called Two Bitches, so I don't know, I just thought I'd mention that. Man, Lil Baby and Gunna could never. <laughs> nah, but for real, the chemistry that these two had was ridiculous. They were really like PB and J, bro. Thug just had the voice to go along any instrumental. He, his voice is an instrumental, bro. While Quan just complimented the track perfectly with his flow, melody, and style. After the smash hit Lifestyle was released. Everyone, including me, wanted an actual tape from the two, and that's exactly what we got on September of 2014, Rich Gang The Tour Part 1, which got a lot of praise from critics, and rightfully so. This tape is a classic, bruh. Javinci, my toes and my bros and my hoes, for sure, for sure. Javinci, he might as well be royal. Blue, shoot up the cool. Rich Gang, hey. I got the streets in the headlock. Hey. I got your bitch in the leg lock. Hey. I go gorilla in the pussy. Gorilla, gorilla. In my world, of course, it don't matter, you know, you could be uh, a gangster with a good dress, <laughs> or you could be a gangster with baggy pants, it don't, I feel like it's no such thing as gender. Hot in a dress. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Somebody got a dress and what the fuck. But you guys do know that with a lot of fame comes a lot of controversy. I remember like it was yesterday when all the young thug is gay comments were everywhere because of all his antics and the way he dressed sometimes. And they kind of had a reason to think that. I mean, he would call all his peers hubby or sexy or my love and wear these kind of outfits. So yeah, take what you want from that, but this was definitely a thing, and still is a little bit. I don't think too many people say that about him anymore though, so yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, you could definitely say that 2014 was a huge year for Thug, but that was only the beginning. 2015 was Thug's year, bro. <laughs> Thugger from like 2014 to 2017 was unstoppable fam you may know some of these you may not either way these should have at least been a major hit in my eyes this is an unreleased track that came out around the same time of slime season 2 which is my favorite era of thug but this song definitely should have made the tape, bro. It gives me those winter, cold weather vibes, and I don't know, and the chorus is just so fire. Then fuck hoes, are you six? And I'm so serious. So serious. So serious. 
his vocals, the ad libs, the flow is top notch here too, bro. Gas. I told that little baby this a pedigree. Now she don't get no sleep like I'm no on sleep. Yeah. I make up for the streets and ready to me. I'm a P I M P, yeah, motherfucker. I'm a bad motherfucker. Green and red motherfucking flag motherfucker. This is a letter to my slimes was breaking slimes. I'm living every week like in my birthday week. I keep me a birthday free. Man, purpose. This track makes me bop my head every time, bro. This shit is just smooth as fuck. The beat feels like, I don't know, like triumphant, I don't know, motivating. I don't know what it is, but this is like peak thug on the vocals too. It's a real shame that this was never officially released. Man, I remember downloading this song off of Hip Hop Early back in the day. This has an eerie sounding instrumental with Thug's vocal sounding just as much like an instrumental. The auto tune sounds fire on this track. Chilling at the top, cloud nine. Chilling at the top, cloud nine. Cash quad. The way he stretches his words in some parts too kind of sounds like Lil Wayne. Because this was around a time where people were saying he's like a Lil Wayne clone and shit like that. This came out around the same time as the song Cloud Nine, actually. So those two songs were in my rotation like crazy. It's such a sad sounding song in a way, but still motivating at the same time. This is Young Thug at the beginning of his prime to me. Twenty fifteen. It was one of Thugger's biggest years for sure. Young Thug, which Thug? The blonde one. The blonde one. Which? And he wears dresses. Lindsay Lohan. She's a young Thug, man. She's a Thug. Don't even look at me like that. This is hot new hip hop, eh? If I was a company and I came up hot new dance party, what would you say? I'm stealing your concept, am I not? Do you approve of it? I don't think you do. If Little Wayne put out the catharsis, I will listen to it. Because it, I will listen to it. It's great music. I like the. I love it. I'll explain in a little bit what that video means. But for now, Young Thug's planned debut album was set for release in 2015 and was set to be named The Carter Six in homage to Lil Wayne's upcoming album, The Carter Five. Lil Wayne, however, yeah, he wasn't too happy about this, telling the audience of a show in April of that year to stop listening to Young Thug. Whoever is in this motherfucker, y'all let him know I said fuck. <laughs> I want y'all to do me a favor and stop listening to songs that of niggas that post naked on their motherfucking album cover. Ooh, ouch. But after claiming he's been threatened with lawsuits, Young Thug announced that he'll be changing the title to Barter Six and clarified that it will be a mixtape rather than his debut album. Can't name the mixtape Carter Six because he fuck at that niggas trying to sue. Did you like some hoes? Big old blood, so I'm going Barter Six on the fucking way. Yeah, YSL. Call the six coming out. Friday, first show. New Orleans, Holly Grove. Fuck, nigga. Meet me there, baby. Beat me there, you did. With them dicks, too, nigga. Yeah. Meet me there, beat me there. You did. With them dicks, too, nigga. <laughs> Yo, honestly, that's one of the most classic. Yo, that's... That's a classic, bro. It's just funny as hell. Also, this doesn't really matter, nor is it really relevant to his music career, but I remember vividly when he got into the beef with the game. I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. What the fuck it is, nigga? What side of this motherfucker? Anybody fucking with you got a fucking fire with me? I will fuck that thug up on power me, nigga. What side, nigga? See, you used to be a crip. Now you're blood. So I don't want no smoke with you. You got bloods and crips on your team. And you was a male stripper. 
once before, so I don't want to fight you. I don't want no germs on you, pussy nigga. And you know I'm in LA more than I'm a Schwarzenegger. He the governor, fuck nigga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah gang, your little pussy. You got out on that one, little bitch. You got out, little fuck ass nigga. Ho. I just seen your little video, you ho ass nigga. You paint your nails like a fucking girl. You call your niggas bae, and you a ho ass nigga. Keep fucking around, niggas gonna drive by that nail shop and light that motherfucker up. Huh. Well, all right. <laughs> Anyways, Young Thug announced on April 18th, 2015, that his debut album will be titled High Tunes. And yeah, it's 2021 and we still haven't got it. But anyways, in May of that year, after a lot of confusion as to who he was actually signed to and managed by, having been aligned with Gucci Mane's 1017 Records, Future's Free Bands, Leo Cohen's 300 Entertainment, Burman's Rich Gang, etc., Young Thug revealed, and I quote, I manage myself. I'm signed with Atlantic. I have a big special deal with Atlantic, and it's only Atlantic. Birdman is my homie." End quote. He also revealed he will be releasing another mixtape prior to the album titled The Carter 5. Yeah, that was a thing too. The video I showed before with this guy was because he was talking about if he named a party Hot New Dance Party, then he's stealing Hot New Hip Hop's concept. And he asked the camera, do you approve of it? I don't think you do, basically referring to Lil Wayne not being happy that Thug is naming the album The Carter Six. Now I had mentioned earlier in this video that a whole lot of songs from Thug and Quan were leaked that year of 2015. There were a lot of speculation as to why that even occurred. So I found this article that if you guys have the time to read, you could pause the video and read it all if you like. But people were saying that Birdman wasn't paying the engineers or producers anything, so someone I guess was tight and decided to leak it all. Someone even said that whoever had the songs was trading all these songs for a few Drake leaks and he got finessed. <laughs> I also forgot where I read this, I'm kinda tired I can't find it, but I saw somewhere that the reason High Tunes never came out was because of all these damn leaks. A lot of these leaked songs turned into his mixtape series, Slime Season 1, 2, and 3, and I guess it all worked out for the better cause all three of those tapes are considered some of his best work. Shit, I'm surprised the songs for Barter 6 didn't get leaked, but speaking of Barter 6 though, pff, classic bruh, with tracks like With That. Check. Halftime. Half a perk, half a zen, nigga. Half time. And some of my all time favorites, Numbers and Just Might Be. Head on boys in that, I know they don't play y'all. Uh. Baby, you know that I might be the real little nigga you ever gonna see. Man, don't even get me started on them slime season one and two classics, bruh. I don't speak English. Nah. I bought that mouth on a six. Oh. Bitch, I dig it. I eat ice cream with my chicken. Yeah. Take them boys to school. Thugger revealed in June of 2015 that him and Kanye had discussed the possibility of a joint album together, both agreeing after a meeting in the spring on Travis's rodeo tour. The details are still kinda scarce, but Thug said Kanye was impressed after previewing his unreleased music. He said, and I quote, I was letting him hear all the music. Then he said I was like Bob Marley and he wanted to do an album with me. I was like, let's roll. Love artists wanna work with you, in particular Kanye West said he wanted to do an album with you. Did that happen? Yes, of course. <laughs> Of course, they can have him whenever, whatever he's with. <laughs> yes, of course. What what can we expect from iTunes? Uh you can expect, you know, um humble culture, perfection, and no leaks. <laughs> what can we look forward to? Like what's next for young folk? We got iTunes when when we're we gonna get that? Maybe this year if, it, if if everything goes how I want it to go. Uh we're gonna drop slime season, maybe next week. Part one, then we're gonna drop Slime Season Part Two, and then we're gonna drop the High Tones album. I might just say fuck it and drop all of them this year. In July of that year, 300 Entertainment released a promotional single, Pacifier, in support of Young Thug's debut album, High Tunes. The song features production from Mike Will Made It and was noted by critics for its experimentation with more extreme vocal scatting, which I can agree with. It's pretty dope, it's different, it's pretty underrated in my opinion. What if I need a pope, need a but it didn't really go anywhere because high tunes never came out so it was kind of just a random single just floating around <laughs> that's my best friend that's my best friend 
flexing. Big old booty bitch message from Texas. What's next? I'ma skeet off, little nigga, come catch me. Catch me. And that's my bestie, my bestie, my best friend. Go best friend. Nigga living TTG and everything is still on fleet. Ba yeah, right. <laughs> Bad bitch rolling with me. She's gonna smile cause she's on fleet. $100,000 inside my pants. My shit's on fleet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On February 4th, 2016, Young Thug released a mixtape titled I'm Up. But I remember the night that it came out, it was supposed to be Slime Season 3 with this cover art. I remember it coming out that midnight, and then like an hour later, it changed to this. Which was kind of weird, but either way, this mixtape is underrated as hell, bro. This shit got slappers on it. I just asked God why he called for true King True X. Heat, bro, heat. Then just a month later, Thug released the official Slime Season 3. Look you in your eye and tell you that I know she works. No. Nigga, horses don't stop, they keep going. But at least we got to say we ran to this, we ran to the memo. They get their what? Said we ran to the memo. In May of that year, Thugger went on to tour the United States, and guess what the album it was for? High Tunes. <laughs> iTunes never came out, but he definitely went on tour, and I actually went to the one in Times Square. <sighs> Shit was lit, bro. He brought out Day Day, Rich the Kid, and Lil Yachty. That was the first time I actually heard about Lil Yachty. And some white kid next to me was like, dude, it's Lil Yachty, man. You never heard of him? I was like, nah. But yeah, it was pretty lit. Bitch, you know it's Lil Ball. Bitch, it's Lil Ball and Lil Perry. <laughs> This week, busy week for you. Um, what did you guys think of the record? It says right here, young thug. No, my name is Jeffrey. Cut the crap. I'm trying to figure out how I can help you. What's best for you? Thug, hello, it's me. I know you. I know the real you. Remember this, young thug? In a Beats 1 interview, Young Thug confirmed that he was changing his name to Jeffrey. My name is Jeff. Now nah, he said, I'm Jeffrey for one fucking week if I don't sell 100,000 copies. And it didn't really sell anything near that, actually. Despite debuting at number 8 on the US Billboard 200, it only sold a total of 37,000 first week. It was always kind of strange to me how Thug, someone that big, with all that hype and numbers he was doing on YouTube, when it really came down to it, he never really sold a lot, which was kind of weird. I don't know what it was, but I guess his fans never really downloaded it, just listened to it on YouTube? I don't know. Yo, but who could forget those memes that were going viral after people saw that album cover? 
but despite the poor sales, it received high praise from critics. Each track was actually named after one of Young Thug's idols, including Gucci Mane, Rihanna, Future, among others, including Harambe, which is pretty hilarious if you ask me. Me personally, I think Jeffrey is Young Thug's top three projects for sure, hands down. Shit is just a classic. In November of that year, he announced that he was starting his own record label called YSL Records. Thugger also went on to be on Drake's album, More Life, on the song Sacrifices and Ice Melts, which were fire tracks if you ask me. He said I'm gonna use a name, like who is he? Got some gold on, leprechaun sheets. You need to give it up to someone. You need to give it up to someone. In April of 2017, Young Thug announced a commercial mixtape, Beautiful Thugger Girls, originally titled Easy Breezy Beautiful Thugger Girls. <laughs> Beautiful Thugger Girls was described by Thug as a singing album, which includes crossovers to musical genres such as R&B, dance hall, and country. Although it has been referred to as an album by Thug, 300 Entertainment have reported it as a commercial mixtape. So that's that whole spiel between what's a mixtape, what's an album. Nowadays with the digital market, I don't know, who knows. And you know what's funny? Thugger Girls also debuted at number 8, just like Jeffrey. And guess how much it sold first week, bruh? 37,000, the same as Jeffrey, I ain't lying bro. But again, despite the poor sales, it was also highly praised, some good ass scores. Me personally, at first, I thought it was I. I only liked a few songs. It took me a while to really appreciate it, like nowadays. To be honest, I actually enjoy it more now. Brand new Rory, Smith and Wesson, you know. I know how to make the girl go crazy. But speaking of this album, I remember going to the Beautiful Thugger Girls tour in Terminal 5 in New York back in May 2017, bruh. Shit was lit, bruh. At the UK Music Video Awards that year, Thugger won three awards for his music video Wyclef Jean off of Jeffrey for Video of the Year, Best Urban Video, and Best Editing in a Video. And in October of that year, he released a collaborative mixtape with Future, Super Slimy. Stacking it time. Don't give a nigga out my city became a boss. If they right, you back in your IG. I only drain that to this. Got four million in jury, oh. Let that money fly to the ceiling, whoa. Which got some mediocre reviews, but that's a collab tape, so I could kind of give it a pass. Thug, Young yep. Thug for which I thought was an Thugger, interesting Thugger. pick. Yep. What made you pick him? He's just, you know, Dope. <laughs> yeah, he's just ill. Like, I, I did uh, get the uh, feedback on that, that mad people were surprised. Yeah. I actually didn't know that until, uh, you know, my little sister was like, what made you take Young Thug on tour? And then I heard from Eve. He was like, yo, you know, people are like kind of bugging out that you took Thug. Like, either they hate it or they love it. They're like, oh, it's genius. Boom, boom. But really, it's just like, yo, the nigga's dope. Like, what, right. you know, you want to talk about Young Thug is like an artist. He's an innovator. Like, if you know skills... You can call him a mummy rapper all you want, but if you know skills and you know like the art of rapping and you know like uh, how to how you put words together and you know pockets and you know flows and you know the things he's doing with his voice, the dude is a genius. Mm. You know what I mean? So like to me it's like y'all are tripping. That's some really high praise coming from someone who people consider the GOAT in J. Cole. In 2018, Thug dropped a super small EP called Hear No Evil, which was alright. A collab mixtape with his fellow YSL peer, Slime Language, which I thought was super disappointing. Got a tall Asian drink, sipping red, bitch. Red. And another EP called On the Run, which was super underrated. That joint with Jaden Smith be slapping, bruh. Hey, hey, I'm dripping again. The way that I drip, this shit should be a sin. Oh, yeah, and that song Havana won like mad awards, bruh. It's crazy. Now, now. 
With the release of The London in 2019, believe it or not, it was the lead single for his debut album, which is, I don't know, that just sounds crazy, but the name of that album was supposed to be called Gold Mouth Dog, but it was later changed to what we now know of today as So Much Fun. It's hot! It's hot! Oh, it's hot! Yeah, when that remix dropped, that shit was hitting, clearly. But speaking of so much fun, that's exactly what it was. Fun as hell. At first, I thought it was good, but nothing crazy. But it definitely grew on me. And now that the deluxe version is out, that's something I've been playing a lot lately. And this album got some decent scores actually. Now in terms of impact on the rap game, come on, you already know the vibes. Especially fashion wise, he inspired so many of these rappers today. He even said on an Instagram live broadcast, I think back in 2018, he said, I'm the drip god. I created this shit. I made the way for young people to open up and be they self. I did this. I got crucified. They call me gay. They ain't call y'all gay. I made y'all tie y'all jeans up. I'm the wave god. I'm the wave god. I'm the master. I'm the founder. I made it cool for y'all rappers to tote y'all dicks and y'all skinny jeans. <laughs> Honestly, I would argue that tighten in their jeans thing because, I don't know, rappers like Lil Wayne. And it's ironic because that's Thugga's influence, you know, kind of started it first. You know, even the new boys with the jerk movement, that, come on, bro. You got to admit, they kind of made that lit. To be honest. And just look at other rappers like Sababy, Uzi, Lil' Keed, Gunna, Lil' God, Lil' Baby. Come on. They were all influenced by Thug. He was one of the first popping rappers since Wayne to do all the face piercings, that punk fashion back in style. And the, even though my boy Lil' B kind of started that grandma jewelry, you know what I'm saying? Or shout out to the bass guy, you feel me? Bro, that boy even won a Grammy for his songwriting contributions to This Is America, along with Donald Glover. And I just found this Reddit post, actually, on if Thug is the greatest artist of this generation. Man, I don't know. Do you think he made an impact on the rap game? Because I definitely think so. His flow, his vocals, they're all just insane. And fashion wise, you gotta give the man his credit. I just mind my business in a rave. I just, I just put some gold around my wrist like a spade. Yeah, call the Sprite people. Call them, hold on, private flight franchise sites. Um, take the top out of cool every cup. If you love me, then come eat my nuts. Take the road, rest in the Ferrari, bitch, it's time out. Take a spoon of fucking pill, it's motherfucking eyes out. Started with a penny, now it's red up to a million. Rapping, rapping niggas can't compare, they like my dream. Like, catch me, catch me. I'm a lick of skin, she's so precious. Thug was doing his thing in 2020, but we all know how tragic that year really was. No one could do shows. It was basically a blur, but he did drop a collab tape with Chris Brown called Slime and B out of nowhere, really. At first, I was like, what the hell? Breezy and Thug together? Hmm, maybe it could work. Turned out it did, and it sparked a smash hit, which was an anthem for the summer for me in Go Crazy. Sticky, sticky, Ricky, Thug wasted no time in 2021, bruh. Especially with the release of his sequel to his Slime Language 1 mixtape, with Slime Language 2. It's basically a giant collab tape with all his homies and YSL partners he tries to shine light on, which is dope on his part. The tape debuted at number one and sold 113,000 copies first week, including 6,000 pure album sales, which is pretty solid for nowadays. Last time we was here, Thug, you shook shit up. You know, you said, uh, shit, I got 30 motherfucking hits. Jay-Z ain't got that. And I knew you wasn't saying it in that light. You feel what I'm saying? You was just basically saying, I got a lot of fucking records. And when my shit come on back to back to back to back to back 30 times, they singing word for word. That's all I was saying. And 
Basically, that's all I was saying. I just used his name just because he the biggest nigga in the world to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I just used his name and let, and to let the world know, like, yo, nigga, I got just as many as hit. This the biggest nigga in the world. I'm doing two hours on stage. Real. I don't, I don't remember my last hour show. <laughs> That was <laughs> 10 years ago huh? Right And I don't do the too much talking I give it a fuck Very loud Truth To me All these things are what punk means to me I'm killing by my brother and I know that you see My new house didn't come with a key Got type in and see All I see is a bunch of ops trying to rise from the dead Wanna smoke me like I'm in dog If you gon' kill him, better not be slapping I taught my daughter keep one in the head She ain't gotta cock it Everything a hundred, I don't ever leave a fifty Yeah, they won't have time And for was simple I was with Matt the day before he died what? No And the song that we did at the studio The name of the song is Day Before Crazy Wow have you ever just wished like God could just really talk to you? That's crazy, fam. Rest in peace, Mac Miller, for real. But since we're on the topic of punk, the album debuted at number one, selling 90,000 copies first week. The song TikTok was one of the lead singles of the project. Talk about the trenches, I came out the trenches. I came from no roaches, I came from the riches. I'm from where they call you a red if you snitch it. But it never ended up on the album. Personally, I thought the album was different. I heard it maybe twice all the way through, but never really go back to it, to be honest. It's basically the concept of beautiful thugger girls, but more concise, you know? It's like a beautiful thugger girls 2.0, which isn't a bad thing. I'm just not the biggest fan of the slow acoustic guitar kind of thug. Like, it isn't bad. I'm just such a fan of his old shit that this wouldn't be something I go back to like that. The album didn't spark any hits from it either, but one hit that thug did end up being on at the end of this year was this. Yeah. Too sexy. Yeah. And he was on Donda as well. Bangers for real. We had a show in New York tonight, but we got racist people flying us. They say that we disrespect them. We haven't disrespected them at all. So now they're trying to kick us out of plane and make us miss the show. And we haven't done anything. Excuse me, sir. What did we do to get put off the plane? What we do? What we do? Right. His name is Alex. He's racist. He's disrespectful. We haven't did anything to disrespect him. We're not getting off this plane. We don't care how many police you call. You call 62 million police. We don't care. You racist. You mad because we got money. My fans told you you're not Pete. My fan, he said, Alex, you're not Pete. <laughs> you ain't Pete, Alex. Let's go, Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Let's go. Fuck me, right? Let's check it out now. Holy! Now, people, y'all know what happens when that Puerto Rican nigga named Rico come around, okay? Oh, man. God damn. It's looking like pushing P might get a new meaning because Young Thug and Gunna have just been arrested today for Rico. Man, I did not see this coming. Young Thug and Gunna are among 28 people associated with YSL, that's their Young Stoner life, that have been charged in a 56 count indictment yesterday. Thug, Gunna, and 26 other YSL affiliates have been named in a 56 count indictment that could put them all away for life. On Monday, May 9th, Young Thug's crib in Atlanta was raided by police. Cops tore his house apart, taking walls down, and digging up his yard for evidence. Thug was booked in the Fulton County Jail on conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act and participation in criminal activity. According to the 88-page indictment, Thug started YSL in 2012, and the gang has engaged in all kinds of criminal activity over the years, including murder, attempted murder, drug dealing, carjacking, and even shooting at Lil Wayne's tour bus back in 2015. Yeah, just when Gunna and Thug were at peak superstardom and YSL was on top of the world, it all came crashing down. Due to years and years, and I mean, bro, the feds been on them since like 2012, 2013 or some shit like that. They were all over the criminal activity that was involved within the crew. That Rico is no joke. They saying he's the kingpin and the head honcho, as well as using lyrics against him. I'm not gonna sit here and do detective work, but it is crazy how you can have all that fame and fortune just for it to be gone in a matter of a second. Thug at this point has been denied bond a few times already too. But at this point in time, under Title 17 and under the case law, and it's been argued thus far, um, I am not gonna grant bond at this point in time. Bond will stand denied. At one point, he asked to use the bathroom, and the whole court laughed at him, bro. Excuse me, Your Honor. May I use the restroom? I got. I need to be here. I've, I've been holding it for a long time. <laughs> it's not funny, y'all. Y'all be man, be at ease. Uh, yes, sir. I'll, in fact, I'll just take five minutes, and you can go ahead. Everybody can. You come back, okay? All right. Yes, ma'am. He even spoke at Summer Jam in New York this year from a cell phone. The free YSL campaign was running wild all over Miami Rolling Loud. He posted on his Instagram in April of this year saying, these past few weeks gave me so much to talk about. Y'all ready? It looks like a slime season four or whatever, but who knows when this is coming out now. But yeah, Young Thug, sex himself, Young Jeffrey, bruh, is one of the most influential artists of this generation, no doubt, and is an absolute legend in my book. There's so many features too that I'm sure I left out, shit, off the top of my head, like Forever Ever off Life's a Trip, or Yamborghini Dream, or Stay Down with Lil Durk, or fucking Unicorn Perp from The Wizard, or We Ball with Meek Mill, or On God off Death Race for Love. Like, bruh, I'll be here all day talking about all the bangers this man is on it's it's ridiculous for real shit if you was to ask me right now what's your favorite young thug song of all time is <sighs> that's tough bro i would probably say it's this right here <laughs> I'm fucking with y'all, bro. It's probably numbers off Barter 6. It's just so nostalgic to me, and it's just such a banger, bro. In fact, I remember last year, I entered this competition that his team put together for the fifth anniversary of Barter 6, where I made, like, mad different cover arts. I even made a whole, like, gif with a song in the background. I'm still salty I didn't win, but <laughs> it's all good. Dogger! <laughs> So bad. Can't wait to edit it. And then I'll talk, and then I'll talk about his impact on the rap game. <laughs> 